Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and I'm going to be talking about the Star Wars Edge of the Empire campaign that I was recently in. Um, it was the Hut campaign, and uh, so this was run. I, I'm, I'm fortunate to, to be in a, um, um, a pretty good uh, tabletop role-playing game group, and so this campaign was run by a, a college student, um, and uh, actually it was uh, me and my daughter, and then the son and the father, uh, the son ran the game, and the father um, also ran a character in the game, and then uh, his daughter was also in the game. She's a co female college age student, and then uh, we have uh, we have a friend um, from uh, we have another friend. He's uh, he's 35. So there's five. He was uh, four players and one one DM. And so today, what I'm going to talk about is uh, so that's kind of the the, uh, the gender and the the uh, generations. Um, you know, gender and ages of the of the makeup of, uh, and one of the reasons why I mentioned that is I'm really I'm fascinated by tabletop role playing games. Um, I'm you know I'm worried about their future because there's just such an onslaught of entertainment out right now, and tabletop role playing games require reading, and so they're they're starting to slowly die. Um, well, it's arguable. It's, it's just like comic books. It's a weird thing. Comic. There's so many parallels between tabletop role playing games and comic books. So if you look, if you listen right now, people will say that comic books are just on the way out. The largest um, subscription in the world right now for uh, for a comic book is 120,000 comics are sold for the lar for the number one selling comic book, and that's nothing. You know, there's magazines and you know, it, it just much much. Um, it's a very small distribution to compared to what what they used to sell. Um, so you know, but on the same side, you know. Um, Avengers just almost made two billion dollars, so it's it's really hard to say what what the real state of comic books, not not comic book characters, not comic book fiction, but comic books are. Same thing with a tabletop role playing games. So I'm really kind of fascinated. So you know, I feel super you know uh, really wonderfully blessed to be in this group because we have females and males in the group, and actually you need females being attracted to the to the hobby. Uh, generally, it's been a male dominated hobby for a long time. Um, and so, you know, I wanted to be robust. I wanted to have uh, many minorities involved. I wanted to have, you know, um, men and women who are who are enjoying it. Um, uh, and you know, so it it's one of those things. And then, you know, so I'm blessed to have uh, to be in a group which has a, a pretty good spread of ages, has a good spread of of, of genders, and uh, and you know, it's really fascinating to me that the game can actually support and people can have fun. You know, if they're 43 or 14, you know, and that, that was the range in our in our game. Which is pretty, you know, pretty unusual. So, and uh, Star Wars: Age, Edge of the Empire really did a great job of, of allowing everybody to play a character they wanted. So today I'm going to talk about the characters in the game. All the characters except mine. I'm going to do a separate video for mine, um, just because I can talk in more depth because I wrote the character. Um, so there were three characters in this great game, and boy, they were really cool. So the first one was played by um, a guy, a guy my age, uh, the father of the of the GM. Um, and uh, he, he played a character named Ian Tolo, and Ian Tolo was a smuggler. So he had a very, very high, <coughs> excuse me, he had a very high um, uh, piloting skill, uh, and he had some street smarts, and he was really good with a blaster. Um, and so, you know, and the game, you know, and it wasn't, it was, you know, he wasn't, I don't think, well, Ian Tolo is actually Han Solo with the uh, letters brought down or uh, brought up one. So on go, H goes to I, S goes to T, and Ian Tolo. This is a really clever name. It was really neat. And um, and he did have a Han Solo flavor to him, but I, I also thought that you know, the, the guy who played him did a great job of really just uh, just really doing a good job of, of making him um, a unique and exciting, and he had a lot of that same flair as Han Solo, but he made choices that Han wouldn't have made, and uh, it was pretty interesting. And and but just like Han, he had some epic saves. So one of the, one of the most uh, coolest things he accomplished in the game was um, we essentially we had two jobs. They were both the same. We had, we had to assassinate two. Uh, and they were different, you know, runs essentially different um, different adventures. But we ended up assassinating two different huts, right? So that, that was our job. And uh, my character was like, eh, we really want to do this. But, you know, we went down the road. And it was great. We really had a lot of fun with it. And so, um, uh, and so uh, one of the things we had to do was in order to uh, infiltrate the huts, uh, there was a swoop bike race. And so we had to pose as a swoop bike uh, racing gang. And uh, Ian Tolo won the swoop bike race uh, races, which was really neat. And so he used his um, piloting planetary 
in order to, to get that done. And that's one of the skills in Edge of the Empire. So one of the things that, you know, I'm just kind of calling out here is Edge of the Empire does a fantastic job of letting you tell amazing, really exciting Star Wars stories with the same flair as the films. I just really, really enjoy this game. Uh, the, the books are beautiful, just full color, hardback, really fantastic, extremely well organized. Um, the art is just stunning. It uh, really captures all the wonderful races in Star Wars and so forth. Um, so let me get back to the, to the the player characters. So another player character was H1N1. And this is really fascinating. We're uh, everybody in the group. We have we're blessed to have this uh, this friend. Um, uh, he's around 35, so he's kind of in the middle of of the group. And one of the things too is uh, he's not a father, so he's a single guy. So again, you know, just kind of a different dynamic. And one of the things, the only reason I'm pulling these out is, you know, I just really think it's so wonderful. That's the great thing about tabletop role-playing games. It takes people from different backgrounds and people with different life experiences and just, you know, brings them into a world together where they can create characters together and, and play stories together. So he made a droid named H1N1, which is a little clever joke on his part. And um, and so, uh, and one of the things that was interesting was his droid had served a Jedi just the way R2-D2 had served Luke. The only problem was... There was a point where um, the droid just worked so closely with his master that he actually, and his master was constantly studying the Force using holocrons, that the droid came to believe that he was on a journey to actually learn uh, the ways of the Force, which was, that's my phone, sorry people. <laughs> so, uh, to learn the ways of the Force, you have a droid who believed he was a Jedi, which was just stunning, and, and the, this player is just phenomenal. He's one of the best role players I've ever seen. Um, just always telling great stories and, you know, really uh, very exciting. And uh, it was really, really a great character. The last character um, was SD-42, and it was a pro it was a droid, right? Now, this is a, to my shame. I really, I never understood this character, right? So this was played by um, a female uh, um, college student. It was the sister of the, the game master. And, um, and so, and actually, that's one of the things I really like, is the sister and this brother they just have a great relationship. They... <laughs> They build they build tabletop role playing game characters together. They they read the same books. They watch the same anime and uh, just have a really great relationship. And you know they they encourage each other to be more intelligent, to be better readers. Um, you know you could tell that the sister had really uh, you know kind of helped the the brother build the campaign, which was you know and I just keep going back to tabletop role playing games. They're just such a wonderful hobby and they're you know they just bring out the best in people and human beings. And I really you could see that here. And so, um, well, but it was, I never really got this character that much. It was a droid. I thought it was a protocol droid who happened to be extremely violent, but that wasn't the case. It was an assassin droid that was um, masquerading as a protocol droid. And so I didn't really get this until about, you know, near the, we ran, uh, I think, six, I think we ran seven sessions. Really great, really, really epic campaign. And, um, and so SD-42 was uh, extremely powerful. He used like disruptor rifles, and um, it was real. I think she was also pretty good with uh, with hand, to -hand actually with with melee weapons. Most of her combat was ranged, though, and so this was a protocol droid that 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 did a lot of ranged combat. Um, and I really, you know, so um, I think there was more depth to this character than I a lot than I really understood. And so I, I'm I'm you know I read a lot of books and I watch a lot of movies and. You know, and, and I, I think I'm fairly intelligent, but a lot of times I can tell when I'm missing something, you know. And so a lot of times I, I'm just thinking about something else or I'm not completely tracking. And so I think there's more depth to the SD-42 that I didn't capture. Um, and so, you know, it's just one of those things where when you're playing a role-playing game, you want to pay attention. I always try to pay attention and drag out as, you know, and just capture as much story as possible for each character. And so I think I was able to do that on, on some of the other players, but um, I kind of failed on that last one. But uh, but they were all great characters, and, you know, and so it just challenges me next time when I'm in a game, you know, make sure I know the heart of the story of each of the, of the player characters. Because when you're playing a tabletop role-playing game, everybody's telling a story, not just the game master. And so, uh, you know, and uh, it was just a great game. So... Uh, thanks to thanks. Thank you very much, and uh, really consider um, picking up Star Wars: Edge of the Empire tabletop role-playing game. Fantastic delivery of a tabletop role-playing game by Fantasy Flight Games.